me this is Mike it's Sunday here and I'm enjoying the weekend me and Scooter hanging out um, had a rough week I should say Friday was rough really I was working on one of those tankless water heaters and there was a big well tank in front of it and could barely get to it and one thing led to another and I had different parts to put in it it was just a big pain in the butt but anyway I got home and the good news was I had this waiting for me. So here we have a, another Beeman R9 made by Wine Rock. This was a refurb from Pyramid Air and it wasn't supposed to have its sights. And for 339, it took me a week to figure out whether or not I really wanted another R9. I have the R9 in a 177 and I have it in a .20 caliber. And um, I kept thinking and going over and I thought, well, it is my favorite air rifle of all air rifles and that picture with this gun in this position on that pyramid airs website just drove me nuts and you know of course they made it so that they knew that would happen didn't they but anyway i did buy it and when i got it um it had its sights so that was pretty cool i can't even use the sights too well because of my eyes but uh, it's nice to have the sights that belong on there <clears throat> and um it's that beautiful stock right the checkering at the grip the checkering at the forearm the gold trigger just look at the design and the cut of this stock i mean it's it's absolutely gorgeous i don't think it could even get any better i don't know if it would look different maybe cheesier with a white spacer here at the the butt guard but uh, the, the butt pad but um i don't think they need to change this at all so i'm happy i got it <clears throat> excuse me it's uh, morning and I haven't even had my coffee yet but i also got a free rat trap uh it's uh, really the rat on the run not a rat trap but um target down knock down target from pyramid air that was going on at the time of the sale as well so let's talk about the Beeman R9. It's my favorite gun because of the, um, the power level, uh, the weight of the gun, the design of the gun, the shape of the gun. I have a lot of other Beemans. This is my favorite all, all around gun from Wine Rock for me. Um, you know, as far as the Wine Rocks go, we all know they're well made, they're well machined, they're well designed. The shot cycle and the power level that when they build their guns, they're balanced. They're not just making them to make them. Uh, you're not buying a Hatson when you buy a Wine Rock. You're not going to get that big Magnum piston slam and power, but then on a Hatson, they're not designed to be balanced. They're just designed to be powerful. So if you want a Magnum, then buy a Magnum, and it depends on what you consider a Magnum. But um, by all means, Wine Rock rifles are well made. That's what you're getting. You're getting the quality. So as far as quality um, goes, um, no matter what air rifle you buy, it really pays if you're in a sport, if you can do your own work. Because every air rifle, no matter who, is going to need some TLC. And the factory just does not go as far as you can take it. Now, if you get one that doesn't need anything and it's accurate and there's no problems and there's no honking, it's not dry, that's really great. But for the most part, guys in this sport know what they're doing and they're going to go through that rifle and put the better lube in. They're going to go over it. They may even make a custom guide for it. They're going to dolly that rifle up and give it all the TLC it, it was lacking from the factory. And so if you don't know how to do that, then I highly suggest that um, uh, you can get a, a friend of yours who knows what they're doing or just actually pay if it's you have a favorite gun to have it gone over. Well, with that said, we can get into another clip. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll see what we can get into. I don't know what Scooter's doing back here, but he's doing something. So, uh, <clears throat> thanks for hanging out. Um, but real quick, was it redundant to have uh, three Beeman R9s? Not really. Um, one in each caliber. It's my favorite gun. What more could you ask for? Now, you may like the other different Wine Rock rifles, and that's perfectly fine. We're all going to have different tastes. I still love my Magnums. I still love my Brute hats and guns that I work to death. Um, but this, as far as the quality line of rifles, this is, just happens to be my favorite. So let's get into another clip. Well, speaking of Magnums, here's one. 
I'll have to clear the bench off. This was still left on the bench from before. For those of you saw the video on the um, Gamo Magnum with the big strong gas ram in it, it had a breach seal issue. Well, I was able to fix that. The issue for this gun, since it's on the bench and I gotta move it, was with the breech seal. This did have a gap right here at the breech block area, but the issue with this was, I'm sure there's a seal somewhere, but I showed it in the other video. It um, The breech seal was sticking out way too far and the lock and jam was actually closing on it. But believe it or not, even with that going on, this gun still had um, 900 feet per second. It's a .22 and um at any rate um i was able to fix that um, gamo gave me another breach seal and all i did was uh, fine sand the breach seal down reset it in checked it and then i checked the um the breach seal area see if it was leaking and then i cronied it but let's get this guy off the bench we'll have to do a uh, conclusion one of the youtubers did ask me about this trigger and it is a composite trigger um, it does look like it's metal it's cool looking but it is composite so I'm gonna get rid of this and we're gonna put our R9 on here and do a little barrel cleaning well I have the R9 on the bench and I have um, goo going down the barrel I get the goo going and I put it in a different container I was using some of the uh, little squeeze tubes for um, you know cleaning babies uh, nostrils out and stuff like that but then I went to this and I'm always searching for something better or something different at the time but right now this is what I have and I so I put it in the um, the barrel what I do is I just put it down in the barrel I overdo it let the excess run out and then I'll um, stuff depend upon what the patches are one or two and then I'll take my rod down um, carefully down the barrel so I have a thin rod it's a brass rod you guys can use whatever you want this is what I'm using but uh, if you use a thinner rod um, make sure you bevel the ends here um, take the time to bevel that end I just did that because this is actually a uh, brand new rod I've got cleaning rods and all that here and here's here's one right here I've got pretty much everything but been doing this long enough that um, you know what you're doing without any chance of uh, damage in the, the barrel these things are made of steel I mean you got to be a you know an idiot to run a rod down and, and damage the bore of your barrel but um, if you know what you're doing and you take your time you're certainly not going to do that but anyway so there's two patches in here this is the first go around to see what the bore looks like we're expecting to see that it's dirty but it may have been cleaned because this is a refurb so I stuck it in because the patches are further down and we're just going to clean the barrel out real quick now um, I'm going to shut the camera off see what the patches are so we don't waste all this film time and then we're going to look at the patches but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll push this through real quick maybe I'll get you a little close up there Always amazes me that you get guys that are not mechanically inclined and they'll be the first to tell you you can't do this you can't do that they and they have no idea what they're talking about um, at any rate um, here's one yeah I would say this barrel uh, has never been cleaned which is this is typical I'll see if I can zoom in on this uh, let's see where we want to go here there you go that's that's typical Typical factory stuff, which is totally understandable. Well, I didn't mean to get my fat gut in there, but that's what happens when you get a little older, your body changes, unfortunately. So then I have the two patches like this, and I'll put them back in here, and then I'll carefully seat them down in there. Get them started. Okay, now once that's in there, I'll zoom in again real quick. It's 
slowly push it down. Pull it back out. And we still have a good ways to go. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's fine. So we're gonna clean the barrel, we're gonna wrap it up on this clip. We'll go to another clip. Okay, the film runs too long, don't blame me. I can almost hear somebody out there, wait a minute, please, can you show me what you're doing? You know, guys that work on this simple um, things of cleaning the barrel, we're so used to it that we forget that other people may not know. So here's the thing now, this is what I do, and I'm gonna say it as quickly as, as I can. I saturate the barrel with the goo gone. I don't play games when I go to clean a barrel. Let me zoom back a little bit. I saturate the barrel with the uh, goo gone. It runs out the other end, great, right? Drops on the floor, I clean it up later on. Then I'll start running some patches down the bore and they come out like we saw on the earlier clips pretty dirty and then I'll, those patches will be dry and then i'll switch again back to where i'm putting two patches at a time that are wet now these patches here are seven eighths they're very small but they seem to be good because you can actually put more than one i usually put two at a time down now then what i do um i'll put the dry patches uh, go through that. I'll watch how much crap comes off. Then I'll start wetting the patches again with the um, the goo gone, um, two at a time if it's a seven eighths. But then um, I'll also start packing. Now this is a two patches here, and you can take something that's smooth and round to set the the patches into the breech. So that's what I did. I got them started just like this. This is a Dremel tip. The end is actually the end of a shaft of a Dremel uh, tool that's all smoothed already. Um, so you just obviously want to be careful not to use anything that you shouldn't. Now this rod, by the way, I'll mention, it's a skinny rod. There's a one right here that's actually bigger, but I'm using a skinnier rod. If you're going to use a rod, then use something that's thinner than the bore, obviously. Um, even if it's designed for that bore, if you can get something thinner, that's better. But anyway, so um, now I have the two patches here. I've already been through the barrel several times. She's starting to come out clean. So I'll pack that down. And then I'll, then I'll go again and I'll set another uh, two in the bore behind that. Um, you can do this until you find out, oops, that's enough. We don't need any more. Um, and I want to wet these again real quick. Put a little dab on there. So there's, there's no set way of doing it, but I'm very uh, meticulous when it comes to stuff. And I don't play games. Um, and I'm not in a hurry of anything. I'm not in a hurry when it comes to working on an air rifle. I enjoy it. I like to take my time. And then anyway, I'll set this and I'll stick it down there, making sure I'm in the center of the tab. So there we go. And then we're going to go down through the bore. Now the butt of this, uh, the butt, I keep saying butt for some reason, the um, the barrel end is off the table. I have the rifle so propped up so it's not touching, but they're starting to come out, see if I can show that. They're starting to come out just slightly brownish, and that's great. So there you are, there you have it, your typical uh, cleaning your, your barrel. The wood block here is notched so that the barrel, I mean the gun sits in there, uh, it's set up to, to work on it so let's go to another clip okay last but not least so now I've been through this pretty good it's just coming out fairly clean I've got it pretty well packed with some extra patches that have been dry this is like the third time around but I want you to just hear if you can I hope the audio picks it up as I slide the um, last bit of patches through again I've packed more than I need it um, to get as many in there as I can that's still going to go down the barrel no problem but listen to the squeakiness if you notice the jerk of the rod it's, it's because the patches are that tight so that's actually pretty pretty darn good that's kind of what you would want and that would be that for that 
now before you go crony in the gun obviously what you would want to do at this point i don't know where we are on a thing but they're pretty old they're dry they're clean and i like it um, you'd want to shoot a couple rounds that'll help get anything that for some reason that this these bunch of patches have not mopped up so i wanted to just throw that in there okay so we're ready to crony this now i shot this about eight times I'm not getting any diesel in out of it. Uh, the barrel's nice and clean. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the um, crony there. I think everybody can see that. Maybe a little bit closer. Man, oh man, does this gun feel nice. I don't know, now that the heater's on, if you can hear the, the actual cocking of the gun. But there's that. Everything just feels and sounds fantastic. Now, I'm using the Crossman pellets. They are, let me just take a look. Yeah, Crossman hollow points. Um, okay, so let's just take a look and see what, what she cronies out. Six forty-seven. That pellet seemed to fit a little on the loose side. So back to the pellets they um some of them are are snug some of them aren't some of them are just right it's weird let me just try to speed it up a little bit for you what a shame the heater kicked in the um, the sound of the mechanics of this rifle is absolutely wonderful. So she's averaging like that 650 down there. I'm beginning to think that somebody actually went over this rifle because she's smooth. She's um, doesn't sound like she's dry at all. You know, as far as the cocking and all that. Now, this pellet is just so loose, I don't... It just basically dropped right in. So let's just see what this guy's going to give us. Well, see, she's a 623 on that one. Let's see if we can find one that fits a little tighter. Nope, that one dropped in too. Six twenty-five. So if I find one that fits a little bit better, let's see. This one. This is a little bit better. Should be more than a six twenty-five. All right, let's give it a whirl. Ooh, I got an error. Hmm. All right. Murphy's law never fails when you're trying to speed things along. Along. Nah, this one's not the greatest either. So that's a 630. And we're gonna see what a 650 gives us. That would be one that fits the breech nice. Oh, and that would be this one right here. This is it. She's all snug as a bug. Let's see what we get. Six fifty nine, just what I thought. Anyway, uh, we'll go to another clip. Well, here's the aftermath of um, cleaning the barrel. This, these were obviously the dirtiest ones. These are just leftover patches. So they are all the patches I used. Um, this is when it was starting to come out cleaner. It's, it was starting to be a little brown. And here's a little small rounded over. You can use whatever works for you. I'm just showing you what I was using. And a rod that was actually probably even skinnier for 177 with the end all smoothed over. Um, so anyway, um, we'll get to our next clip. I've got so many things going on, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I've got these guns here sitting that are waiting their turn. They've been rebarreled. They're um, 
I have a shop that I ripped apart and I can't continue that project until I finish the other project. But anyway, I'm just going to show you my downstairs shop is also in disarray. But, um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. I work five days a week. So we do what we can do. This is fun with air guns and I'm just sharing some of it. Well, I managed to get her scoped, but unfortunately, and I got on paper, but I just ran out of time. It would take a good while to get a new gun and the scope pointed out for it all together where you're happy with it. And that just takes time and I don't have it. I ran out of it. Um, today's Sunday, the day ran out and I have things to do yet still. But um, I love the gun. It's an awesome gun. I wish my eyesight were better. I wish I could have just tossed the uh, open sights and adjusted them, and, and, but that's impossible as well. Thanks for hanging out. Remember, this is Mike saying be safe. I'll show you guys the targets I got down there. So hang on. Well, there we are. Um, there's the sight in target there. That's um, 17 yards. And then I put some uh, four four new um, circle targets in there, but then I never I realized I just don't have the time for this today. And I did get on paper. We're down there. I can't remember. I believe that's 44 yards down there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So let's see. I actually that's zoomed in all the way for this camera. I did get on paper. I just don't have the time. So let's back up here and um, the scooter says hi by the way you can see now that's not the real scooter obviously scooters my cat well there it is the r9 once again a lovely gun um just awesome take care and be safe